Hello world, it's Angelot. I'm back with another tributary video. Today I want to take you through a common workflow of mine where I want to prototype something and then pull it out of tributary. So I use tributary to prototype it, pull it out of tributary into a you know, standalone website. And for the example, I'm going to use the tributary homepage. EJ redesigned it recently and um, along with making it more clear and accessible, I think, and better looking. He also designed some cool sections to kind of help people find interesting tributaries to check out. And we've recently been collecting user stats and stats on, on the tributaries created, like how many visits they have, how many forks they have, that kind of thing. And so he included a section here where we'd show the most active users and the most active inlets. And these are actually live, so if we go to any of these, we see a tributary inlet that um, you know we can play with a fork. Um, this is actually a list of all the latest inlets. Uh, you know, so and these have gotten the most views so far uh, since we started recording the stats. So, you know, what I did when he designed this, he kind of said like, you know, we should have a section. This is what it would look like. I was like, cool, so I know I have the API, so I'm going to use, here's a couple of these, so this is the most viewed API, so if you just go API slash most viewed, um, and you can see more about the APIs, I, I uh, let people know what we're developing on the tributary mailing list, so it's a D3, uh, Google group um, tributary, and join that to keep updated, anyway. What we'll look at though is how to make this simple example and then take it from tributary, get it looking how we want in tributary, take it out and put it into its own website. I'll take you through my whole flow with that. All right, so this API gives us all the users and it sorts by the visits. It gives us five of them, so there's only five here, and uh, in descending order. So if we change this to one, we'd actually get the people with the fewest visits. Um, if we wanted to see by number of inlets, like the number three will change here. Um, see, Nils has a lot of inlets, um, but Chris Piao um, has a lot of visits because he tweets from D3 Visualize, which you should follow if you care about D3 and want to learn, uh, interested in it at all. Alright, so how do we make this? Let's start by making a new tributary. Um, we need the URL to this API. Uh, we need to make a D3 JSON called to this URL. The new D3 version 3 uh, JSON callback uses the standard node uh, error response callback structure. So if we look at our response, we see our array five objects. We care about this avatar URL, is how we'll get the little icon, and the login name for now, right? So, let's make a users variable, and we'll save it here as the response, and then we'll call a render function. And we'll define our render function. And you know, in a real app, this stuff might be more complicated, but while we're prototyping, we just want something as simple as possible so that we can uh, see if it works. And once we're happy, we'll uh, continue on our way. So let's see here. Uh, we have our users, so we will do, um, we need to select, we want to do this in HTML, right? So normally we do a lot of SVG with D3, but Sometimes you just want to make an HTML website, data driven. So you see under this config, I just chose an HTML display option. And what I can do is select in tributary, I give you a display um, node that you can append things to. So if you do display that and span. Um, set the text of that to something like that. We'll see it here. 
Um, but what we really want to do is select all, you know, div.user. Uh, I'm going to save this selection. Save, set the data to users. I append a div, class it as user, like we said, and then I can just set some attributes on, um, let me save this as user enter. And so we're going to append a image, and we'll do select image set the source to function of D return D avatar yeah. and we need to set the width to like let's say 16 height 16 I think he's in D Let's see. Users. Users. Oh, there you have it. Some real life debugging. All right, and then um, we also want to append, let's say, a span. Text of that span to a function d and it's going to d dot y. And what we can do is actually do these in the opposite order, and then we can add a style sheet, and user, do image, and flow right. See, uh, yeah, I'm not the expert on CSMF. Oh, that's right, right. You just set these up as list items. And then. Text align, right? I get confused a lot with that. Uh, CSS and or SVG. So let's make these instead of divs and make this a UL or a line. And we'll do user list equals display that. Oh, I see. Uh, I think the problem is that we need to set the width to something like 200 pixels. There we go. Oh, 
All right, so we have ourselves a user list. And let's see here, let me save that real quick. Now, this is simply some HTML generated by this JavaScript, right? So the next part is pulling this out into a, our own page. So I'm going to use the command line here. I just have, in my desktop, I've created an example folder. It's empty. Um, I'm going to open index.html. If I save that out and go to finder, um, and go to my desktop, the example folder is index.html, that's fine. So now I'm just gonna, you know, make an HTML page, however you like to make your HTML page. Body. And I'm going to make this display here, because that's what we assume in tributary. And also, we need to include D3. So what I do if I need to D include D3 and I don't have it on my own server or whatever, I go to blocks, um, usually Mike Bostock's blocks, and choose one of these sweet things like that. Just look down here, and you see he's hosting D3 version 3 on d3js.org and go in here paste it in there and then all I have to do if I copy all this out put that in a script tag you know you can add your type JavaScript and all that stuff but let's see if this works right so we have our display div already in there we just need to go to this. So I use this Anvil program on Mac, where you can just simply add a local directory, like a navigate desktop, oops, example, open that up, call it example there, that's good. And let's see what's going on here. So, oh, of course, because I'm just not even actually click this refresh that. Oh, there's our stuff. We don't have our style sheet, so let's go into our head and do style. Um, there's our, our guys, and now of course you want to style the font, get rid of this list stuff. I leave that a as an exercise to the, the watcher. Um, but there you have it. I mean, you just have to make sure that the assumption that Tributary made for us, which is that you wanted a display to put your HTML stuff into. And this is exactly the same in the SVG case where, you know, a lot of times we do something like uh, d3.select SVG. Tributary is just giving you an SVG that fits right there that you append all your stuff to. So as long as you have an SVG in, in here, like doing something like this, you know, SVG, um, and you might give an ID like my SVG, then you can just copy paste the code out. Uh, I try to make as few things that are like tributary specific that you would have to deal with when pulling your prototype out. Um, I do have the capability to add you know, libraries here, but you would just import those libraries here. Um, tributary includes a few libraries like underscore, background, that kind of stuff that you may use. Uh, but if you're using those, you probably already know how to include them in your own site. So yeah, hopefully that gave you an idea of how I go about from the inception of an idea to the implementation. Um, try it out. Let me know how it goes for you. Like I said, uh, we have a tributary Google group. Let's find it real quick. Tributary. So I think if you just Google 
in groups, you can find it. And uh, we're talking about how we use Tributary, we're helping each other out, and we're developing Tributary. Um, so check us out, hope you enjoyed it. All right, peace.